Hello, students. I think it's about time we covered another monster, don't you? In order to give you all a class while I continue working on my Avarice and Vanilla history, I thought, why don't we look at the Dorats from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah next? And thus, here we are. Time to study the complete history of these artificial pets from the future. We'll start with their behind-the-scenes creation. This is Godzilla vs. Biollante, and this is Back to the Future Part 2, two movies that came out in 1989. Why am I bringing them up? Because one had so many Dorats, of course! No, actually it's because one of these films, in a weird sort of way, seems to have influenced the creation of the tiny Ghidorah cats. Back to the Future Part 2 outperformed the poorly received Godzilla vs. Biollante at the Japanese box office, prompting Toho to look into what the reason for that might be, so nothing similar would happen with their next Godzilla film. And this was the conclusion they came up with. Godzilla movies needed more of something. More of a very specific something. More... Time traveling! So, they sought to work time travel into their next movie, believing this would help make it successful. And in addition, they also decided to bring King Ghidorah back, since he was a popular monster who could help sell some tickets. Now, how do you tell a story about King Ghidorah that is centered around time travel? Well, there are probably a lot of ways, one of which is to have these people from the future travel back in time with three artificial creatures called Dorats and have them get hit with radiation from a hydrogen bomb and turn into a giant monster to destroy the people of the past. And that is the story that director Kazuki Omori chose to tell. Though he did change the Dorat's backstory a little from what it was originally. Initially, they were supposedly going to have been created from the body of an either sleeping or dead original King Ghidorah on Venus. But Omori didn't want his movie to be about, in his words, a silly space monster, so he removed this plot point to sever any ties King Ghidorah had to outer space in his movie, though this remained in the movie's novelization. Kazuki Omori is credited for writing the script, but the fact that there was something he really wanted changed seems to imply that there may have been another writer too, so I'm not certain exactly who came up with the Dorats. I do know who was in charge of designing them though, that was Shinji Nishikawa. He followed the description in the script that called them a synthetic organism resembling a cross between a bat and a cat, and created a bunch of different designs, including some that looked so cat-like they didn't even resemble King Ghidorah at all. It seems that this design here might have been the design the crew went with, though quite a few edits were made when the props were built, such as giving the Dorats larger wings, green hair, for some reason, and some other changes. Three normal Dorat models were constructed for the movie, as well as an animatronic top half of a Dorat for close-up shots, as well as this upper body puppet too. In my opinion, most of these are pretty cute, but this one looks creepy. The puppets were operated by the main production assistant director and by one of the actresses, Anna Nakagawa, who plays Emmy in the movie. Kazuki Omori was apparently not too pleased with how the monsters ended up looking, saying in a later audio commentary for the film that they looked like toys no matter how you looked at them. But that may have been the best they could have done because the Dorats were apparently not included in the budget for special effects. The name Dorat was, I think, actually supposed to be Drat instead, as funny as that may sound. A Japanese source lists their name as being a combination of the words dragon and pet. However, over here in English-speaking countries, I guess we thought their name came from King Ghidorah, so we changed it to Dorat, and that seems to be what stuck. However, there is an English source which claims their names do come from Ghidorah, but it's unsighted, so they may just be guessing. But since I don't know the full story, I guess all I can say is... Drat. <laughs> the last thing to cover before we go in-universe is the roars of the Dorats, or should I say, their adorable whimpering noises. I couldn't find any info about how Toho created these Dorat cries, all I know is they definitely get the job done. Alright, time to head back to the early 90s and check out the role of the Dorats in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Let the time traveling begin. Oh, time traveling, that reminds me, I've got a UFO at home that can do that. Whoa, really? Wanna go take it for a spin? You bet! Uh, I don't know about this. Shouldn't we stay here? We're in the middle of class. Eh, the professor won't mind. It'll contribute to our education. Yeah, but also... Come on, scaredy ah! In Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, a group of Futurians, people from the future, partnered with folks from the present, well, technically the past now since this was in 1992, to go on a mission to the even further past of 1944 and teleport the godzilla Saurus that became Godzilla off the island where he became irradiated with a hydrogen bomb in order to change the past and make it so Godzilla ceased to exist. But the Futurians also had another secret motive. They wanted to use that bomb from the past to create King Ghidorah in Godzilla's place, so the three-headed monster could wipe out Japan. As we've already mentioned, that's what the Dorats were for. The Futurians wanted them to get irradiated and become Ghidorah. However, if Emi Kano was telling the truth, these human-created creatures were also popular pets in the future. 
they were said to be able to sense the emotions of humans. The people of 1992 first encountered the Dorats as they boarded the ship known as Kids, and Emmy Kano used a special flute thing to get the Dorats to come to her so she could put them in the microwave. No, just kidding, they're little kennel. It does look like a microwave though, someone actually put up a funny YouTube video pointing that out. They stayed in there until after the Godzilla Saurus had been teleported elsewhere, and then Emmy opened a hatch and the Dorats went for a fun little slide out the vehicle and began frolicking around in the grass on the island. As the team aboard kids prepared to return home, Miki Saegusa noticed the Dorats weren't in their cage anymore, and asked where they were, but Emmy changed the subject and everyone went back to 1992, and when they got back, suddenly King Ghidorah had arrived to threaten humanity. The Futurian's plan had succeeded. The three Dorats had mutated into a giant three-headed monster. But we're only discussing Dorats today, so this is where our look at this film ends. <laughs> So, what other media features Dorats? Well, the cute monsters didn't come back in any other movies, but later on they did make a few small video game appearances, with the most major being Godzilla Battle Line for Android, iOS, and PC. In this game, the Dorats are a flying unit that can perform a weak ramming attack. Probably the biggest role for the Dorats since their movie debut was in the web series Godzibon. In this show, the Dorats are little villainous creatures from the future who call themselves the Three Dorat Brothers, and often travel to the past for up to three minutes to look for eggs to eat. They first got into a conflict with the Three Godzilla Brothers in the episode Godzilla Fest 2019 show, when they wanted to eat an egg the Godzillas had found, and then they later tried to eat a different egg Manila was caring for, and came back to try to turn the Rodan that eventually hatched from it into a fried chicken. Luckily, they didn't get their way. In this show, they have the ability to shoot electricity, cause things to float, and morph into King Ghidorah whenever they want. They definitely aren't as cuddly this time around. As always, let's conclude with merchandise. Let me just say, as I mentioned in this video, there are a disappointingly low amount of Dorad items available out there. It's hard to believe we live in a world where there is a Magic the Gathering Dorat card, but no Bandai Movie Monster series or similar style figure available. Probably the best option as far as toys currently out there are these little Dorats that came packaged with an SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah. Aside from that, there is a figural bag clip, and yeah, as far as I can tell, that's about it. It just boggles my mind how hardly anyone is taking advantage of the cuteness these little creatures could add to a collection. Hopefully this issue will be resolved in the near future. Oh, hey, oh wow, I ended my lecture with the word future unintentionally. How's that for a good finish to a class about a creature from the future? Anyway, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, check out the many Toku figures in my eBay store, and follow me on Twitter. And stay tuned, because rumor has it that there may actually be some official Toku Professor merchandise dropping in the near future. I plan to reveal details about that in my next video, so don't miss it. Now, why are Scrape Sage and Pencil Leopard and Kashimakun missing? We're right here, Professor! Oh, good. What? What happened to you kids? Um, uh, maybe time traveling to an era when the world was far more radioactive wasn't the best idea since sliced bread? I knew something like this was going to happen. I could just feel it in my bones. Uh, I think you mean our bones now. Well, look on the bright side, Pencil Leopard. Now everyone will call you cute and cuddly because I'm part of you now. Oh, no. <laughs> um, well, bye everyone. What do I do now? Drat. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.